Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. And when Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote about the shot heard round the world back in 1837, he was referring to the American Revolution. But it was almost 80 years later when it really happened, when on June 28, 1914, Gavrilo Princip fired the shot that killed Franz Ferdinand, igniting what we now know as World War I. The Archduke and his wife were riding through Sarajevo in what was undoubtedly amongst the finest vintage cars ever produced in Austria. A car fit for kings. And today, we're going to take a look at how Austria's greatest make of vintage car came into being. Graf and Stift. It all began in Vienna, Austria in the mid-19th century. Johannes Graf, along with his wife Anna, were successful merchants who, over a period of 30 years, had 15 children. Now, bicycles were all the rage across Europe in the 1880s and 90s, and Vienna was no exception. Three of Johannes' sons, Franz, Heinrich, and Karl, were particularly enthusiastic about them and began to race them. Also, they decided to open a bicycle garage, a repair center, which opened for business in 1893. This small workshop was the genesis of what would eventually become Groff and Stift. Within two years, the Groff brothers moved into a larger facility in Vienna and expanded their offerings to include their own make of bicycles. These bikes sold very well and the company prospered. At the same time, automobiles began to appear on the scene. Many of the early light cars being built across the world were based on bicycle technology and the Groffs decided to give that a try. They tapped the shoulder of a friend of theirs, Josef Kainz, to design a light car that could be built in their factory, which was completed in 1897. The car that was built was a 5 horsepower De Dion Bouton engine, but had an unusual feature. The engine powered the front axle and not the rear, making this car to be most likely the first front-wheel drive car ever made. Only one of these was ever built. But, nonetheless, the Groff brothers were bit by the car bug. A tooling around up to make production cars would take quite a bit of money, which, although the Groffs were successful, didn't have enough capital to pull it off. But their little car had been seen around town and managed to get the attention of a man that did have the money to do it. Enter Wilhelm Stieft. Willie Stieft was a wealthy Austrian businessman, who, amongst other things, was importing French engines and cars into Austria. Indeed, he was keen on the idea of making cars himself. However, he did not have the engineering skills nor a facility to do so. But the Groff brothers did, and in 1901 they partnered up to make a new car. Using the French Boucher twin-cylinder engines that Stieft was already importing, they created a new make of car, the Celeritas. Built in the now-combined Groff and Stieft facility, the Celeritas was not built in large numbers. Less than a hundred were ever built during the two years of production. Yet Willie had other friends that were importing and selling cars, and one of them was Arnold Spitz. Willie and Arnie got together, and since Spitz also wanted to make his own cars, contracted with the Groff and Stieft manufacturing concern to make his own make of car, the Spitz. From 1901 through to 1907, the Groff and Stieft company built the Spitz make of cars. These were intended to be fast sports cars. Arnold even managed to recruit a very well-known and respected car designer and race driver, Otto Hieronymus, to put together the design of the car and then win races with it. He was successful in his races, and these Spitz cars gained considerable notoriety. Unfortunately, they did not sell well, and Arnold Spitz was bankrupt by 1907, which ended the mark. And so... The Groff brothers and Willie Stift sat down and worked out a new direction for their company. Up to this point, Groff and Stift had not made their own cars. They were a private label company, providing a facility to make cars for other designers and concerns. Yet Willie believed that the real money was to be made by making big, powerful luxury cars. In his view, 
The rich people of the day didn't buy light cars like the Celeritas, and the large majority of them did not buy fast sports cars, as the races of the day demonstrated just how dangerous they were. Thus the die was cast, and in 1907, the first car to bear the badge of Grafenstift was born. The first Grafenstift cars were big, four-cylinder cars with every luxury that could be conceived. Plush leather interior, dual cowl windshields, strong suspensions with dampers for a comfortable ride. Everything a rich buyer would want their chauffeur to drive them around in. The vision of Willy Stieft and the engineering skills of the Groff brothers paid off, and by 1909, the Groff and Stieft cars were the hottest cars on the market throughout Germanic Europe. Groff and Stieft competed directly with luxury makes such as Rolls-Royce and Isotta Fastini. It was arguably the finest car to be produced in Central Europe prior to World War I, and anyone who was anyone wanted to have one in their stables. One of these nobles was Count Franz von Harrach, who purchased a double Phaeton in 1910. It was in this car which he loaned to his friend, Archduke Ferdinand, for a road tour of Sarajevo that World War I began. This particular one is still on display in a Vienna museum, one of the most infamous cars ever built. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.